a blazing, blazing down with its feet, rolling plain, with my pony beside me, and the long star to guide me. Tess can keep us singing all the time. We ain't been to a town yet where he wouldn't have fighting for this or for that. Yeah. Now, he and us is rangers. Yeah. So we can fight in the sheep and cattlemen's war. And what's eating you boys? Yes, and that's another thing, eating. Now, how much further we got to go yet, Tex? You know, we getting kind of hungry. Well, we ought to hit Powder Flats in a couple hours. Yeah. A couple of hours? She have we got to wait that long for we eat? Why, me and Pee Wee's almost starved. You fellas are heading for part of flat. You'd better turn back. There's been a big shooting now just before daylight. Shooting, huh? Well, I guess we're a little late. It's a ghost town. It's no place for us. Well, let's get off and have a look around anyhow. Sure is a spooky looking joint, ain't it? It gives me the creeps. I mean, you actually... Look! Well, this is the place we're looking for, all right. Not me. Uh, me neither. What's the matter with you? A dead man can't hurt you? He ain't that. It's the guy that made him dead I'm worrying about. Come in. Hasn't been dead more than a few hours. Whoever got him can't be far away. Now, you two boys stay here. And if you see anything, just holler. If I see anything more, I won't be able to holler. Right. You mean that you're gonna leave us here all alone? What's the matter with you? you? Ain't scared, are you? No. Uh, but look, we'll have to be killed. That's all right. I'll take my chances on that. Oh, well, that's all right. You take your chances. Hey! What's the matter with you? Don't be scared. Well, what I was going to say is, where do you think the killers might be? I don't know. Maybe they're in that hotel there. Nah, they're not in there. Good. Then we'll look in. That's a black hole hole in there, ain't it? Oh. I don't want to go in there. Oh, wait a minute, Pee Wee. It's safer in there than it is out here. <clears throat> ah! <laughs> Let's get in here quick. Oh, no. Get some light in here. Looks kind of spooky in here. No. It, it does, don't it? Thank <laughs> you. 
Just what I was thinking. Why don't you holler for help? I can't. I've lost my voice. Me too. certainly are well protected, miss. What right have you to come breaking in here like this? Well, to tell you the truth, I... I guess I haven't any right at all to be in here. You see, I'm looking for a man by the name of John Moody. John Moody? Well, that's right. You know him? Are you the ranger from Bodie? Oh. So you're the one that sent us that letter. Uh, Tex Lawrence of the Texas Rangers, at your service. I'm Ruth Moody. John Moody's niece. Well, I'm, I'm glad to know you, Miss Moody. I guess you think I'm crazy. You see, nobody ever comes up here except when there's trouble in the air. And since the war started between the sheepmen and the cowmen, it's been terrible. Well, you, you're a pretty brave girl, but uh, don't you think a gun would be a little more effective than uh, a poker? <laughs> it probably would. You see, we, that is, Uncle John, doesn't believe in firearms. It's against his code. Well, where is your uncle now? There was a shooting down the street a while ago, and he went out to try to stop it. Well, uh, maybe we'd better go see if we can find it. <laughs> All right. Now, Miss Moody, uh, maybe it'd help a little if, if folks around here didn't know that I was a, a ranger. If <laughs> you think best. Let them be good, upstanding cowmen. Keep them away from the evils of sheep herding. Uncle John, I want you to meet Tex Lawrence. Glad to know you, Mr. Moody. He's come to help us. We don't need no help around here. Leastways, not from gun toters. Well, you see, I... Well, he's all right, Mr. Moody. Tex is our pal. Yeah. He thinks the same as you do about gun toting. He's trying to stop it, too. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you, sir. Uh, what's back of all this trouble up here, Mr. Moody? It just how did it all start? Well, you see, I own the water rights on the Picket Wire River. For years, I've been sharing all the water with the cowmen and the sheepmen alike. We never had no trouble of any sort until this trigger Gargan and his bloodthirsty outfit moved in. From that time on, it's been one continual round of shooting and killing, and all because he wants my land and my water for himself. Oh, they're starting again. Well, 
while Jack's taking care of the other herd, we'll take care of this one. Get it! I'd better go out and see if we can find out what's happened. No, no, no. Wait. Let me go. Here, Mr. Moody. You better take this just in case. Me? I never told you the gun in all my life. I don't want it. I know, but you can't take no chances. Oh, all right. All right. To please you. But I warn you. I'm not going to use it under no circumstances. Well, I guess we fixed them blasted cowpokes this time. Now all we have to do is finish the job on this Maverick. Yeah? And don't think because your brother is sheriff that it's... I'd like to have a word with you, sir. Well, what is it now, Gospel? Did somebody steal your hymn book? I've warned you for the last time, Trigger. Not to start anything or any trouble of any sort on my property. We didn't start it. Them lop-eared cowpokes started firing at us when we were watering our sheep. That's a lie. You ambushed us when we were driving our herd through Powder's Flat. Trigger, I've been mighty lenient with you, but I can't stand it much longer. I'm telling you now, you get your sheep and get off my land. You can't do that. This is the dry season, and there's the only place we have to water up. You should have thought of that before. But I... What have you got to say about this, Kane? After all, you're Moody's half-brother. Now listen, John, you can't... You've got nothing to say about the Cross Dam Ranch as long as I'm alive. You, a cattleman born, consorting with a bunch of sheep herders. Where's your shame? Have you forgotten what the good book says? I ain't caring what the good book says. You stick to your scriptures and keep your nose out of my business. You repent them words. You repent them when the day of judgment is at hand. You and all your kind. Wait. This Hank Tomlin's been talking too much. We've got to do something about him. Why, the old boy's carrying a gun. Kane, you know what to do. Come on. It's too bad you had to go and do that gospel. It might go kind of hard with you. I didn't shoot Hank Tomlin, and you know it. Why, it don't make me laugh. We all saw you do it. There's only one way we deal with a murderer around here. String him up, and we got to see... Take your hands off that man! You heard me. Well, what is this? Uh, who are you? Just forget who I am for the time being. What's going on here? Why, this old psalm singing hypocrite just shot Hank Tomlin in the back. That's not true. Is that right, Mr. Moody? There's not a word of truth in it. Everybody around here knows what I stand for. Yeah? Then how do you account for this? Here's the gun that got him, and it belongs to Gospel. Is this all the proof you got? Proof? How much more proof you want? Every man here saw him do it, and each one will swear to it in any court. Looks pretty bad, Mr. Moody. You don't think I did it, do you, Tex? No, sir, I don't think you did. But until we find out who did do it, I guess maybe you'll have to stand good for it. Oh, come on, let's go to Rockford and see the sheriff. I'll be responsible for this man. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm gonna make sure that he gets there. Come well, on. Just a minute. You know, I hate to keep reminding you, mister, 
But ain't you sort of forgetting who's got the drop on who around here? I'll take charge of gospel. Now get out. All of you. Mine may not be so good the next time. Come on, Lope, let's go. Yet there's Gargan and his men who'll swear they saw you that killed my brother. Why, even your own half-brother says you did. But sure, obviously a frame-up. There must be something we can do. We can do right now. The whole community has worked up against gospel. They've even sent out the notices of the hanging. Here it is. Gospel Moody. Arrested on a murder charge. Hello, Ruth. I didn't know you had company. Why, Dan, when did you get back? Just this morning. I was in Battle Mountain selling some cattle when I heard about your trouble, and I came down at once. Oh, this is Dan Barrow, an old friend of ours. Dan, I want you to meet Tex Lawrence. Howdy, Barrow. How do you do? I've made arrangements with my sister for you to come over and live with us until this thing can be straightened out again, and you can sell your share of the ranch. Sell? What makes you think I would do a thing like that? Well, running a ranch is a big responsibility for a girl. In fact, as a special favor, I was thinking of buying it myself, or perhaps running it for you. Oh, that's nice of you, but I have no intention of... And about the other, Ruth, I've gone ahead and made all necessary arrangements for Gospel's burial. Say, you kind of getting ahead of yourself, ain't you? Why, what do you mean? Well, I... I mean that Gospel's not dead, the buried yet. And he won't be for a while, not if we can help it. But I don't understand. What else can we do? The hanging set for tomorrow. I know, we've appealed to the governor for a pardon. We expect to get it sometime tomorrow. I'm riding over to Benson's Gap to wait for it. Benson's Gap? Why, that's over 60 miles away. And that's sundown. You'll never get it through time. Oh, I'll make it all right. I'm riding relays back to Rocky Ford. Oh, relay, huh? Say, when is that pardon going to get here? I've been waiting all the morning. It's here right now. It's about time, I... Here it is. I haven't got much time to lose. Tex Lawrence gets that pardon, he's got to be stopped before he gets to Rocky Ford. Sure you know what to do? We'll take care of him, all right. Good. Come on. Here he comes. Forty miles in three hours. He'll have to step on it. He sure is coming. Come on, get going. The weasel, he's coming. Yeah. Hey, 
ranger. The ranger? Put that away, Lope. The boss says we gotta lay off these killings for a while. Here's what we want. The pardon. Quint, you and we will stay here and take care of this guy. Wait a minute. Pretty nice, eh? I'll keep these for souvenir. Come on. Gospel out here so we can string him up. And that goes double for you, Gargan. It ain't sundown yet, and we ain't hanging gospel until it is. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember, I'm still sheriff here, and while I'm upholding the law, we'll do this thing legally. There ain't gonna be any execution until it's time for it, and that's final. Hey, Sheriff. Huh? Sheriff, I got to see you alone. It's important. Sure, step inside. You boys, watch this mob. What's on your mind, Tex? Did it come through? We've got to release Gospel Sheriff. He's been pardoned by the governor. What a You came just in the nick of time. Let's have a look at that pardon. I haven't got it. You haven't got it? But you said... A gang of bandits held me up and stole it. Stole it? Who were they? Well, I'm not sure. But I think it's the same gang that's trying to frame gospel. Uh, they... They took my guns and rangers' credentials, too. Why didn't you tell us you're a ranger? Well, I, I couldn't. You see, I was investigating this thing undercover. But that's not the point, Sheriff. The point is, gospel's free and you've got to... That's impossible. Impossible? You wouldn't hang an innocent man. Without that pardon, he's still guilty. I'd like to believe in you, Tex. In fact, I do. But it just ain't in my power to release Gospel or even stay his execution without a written order from the governor. But I tell you, he's been pardoned. Look, Sheriff. You said you believe me. That's right. Well, on the strength of that, and my word is a ranger, will you at least grant Gospel a 24-hour stay of execution until I can get a confirmation of that pardon? I don't know, Tex. I want to, but... All right, I'll do it. But only for 24 hours. And then Gospel has got to pay. Don't worry. I'll have it, all right. Folks! There ain't gonna be any hanging tonight. on the way for gospel. 
I'm granting him a 24-hour stay until it gets here. Tomlin, we mean business. We'll make our own laws. Mir, break down the jail. <laughs> Mr. Moody, we're getting out of here. Horses are right over there. Men, get going. Tomlin, put down those guns and get away from that door. Because we're coming through. No, you ain't. I'll stand back or I'll shoot the first man that comes a step closer. I know it is nobody. Me and my pal, my pony. It's a cinch that nobody knows where to find you. So I'm going into town and see if I can find the fellow that stole that pardon. Are you sure it's going to be safe? <laughs> well, I I'll tell you more about that the next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll stop in at the ranch on the way and, and let them know you're all right. Uh -huh. See you later. Good luck, son. Down in the cane break, close by the mill, there lived a yellow gal, and her name was Nancy Till. She knew that I loved her, and she knew it all along. I'm gonna serenade her, and I'll sing this song. Come, my love, come, the boat lies low. She lies high and dry on the old high old. Come, my love, come, won't you come along with me, and I'll take you down to Tennessee. Softly the casement begins for to rise Stars are shining up above in the skies Moon is descending behind yonder hill Reflecting its rays on my Nancy Dill Come my love, come, the boat lies low She lies high and dry on the old high old Come my love, come, won't you come along with me And I'll take you down to Tennessee Farewell, love, I must now away. I've a long way to travel before the break of day. But next time I come, be ready for to go. A sailing on the banks of the Ohio. Come, my love, come, the boat lies low. She lies high and dry on the Ohio. Come, my love, come, won't you come along with me? And I'll take you down to Tennessee. So 
that's the hombre that got my gun. Side eight, Ben. I take a stack. Fill me in. I need it. I read it. Dark wing. King. You don't mind, I'll take those guns you borrowed from me yesterday. Why, uh, sit down. I'll handle this. I've been looking for you, Ranger. Well, now that you found me, what are you gonna do about it? Help! I'll drill the first man that moves. Just you boys didn't hear me. I said, don't move. I sure is. Tex was just here. Tex was here? Mm-hmm. You see, him and Mr. Moody, they're staying up at Bradges crevice. They're hiding out up there until this thing blows over. Yes, sir. You need to worry not about Mr. Moody, not as long as he's under Texas wing. <coughs> what are you kicking me for? Bradges crevice, eh? Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's welcome news to know that gospel's all right and in safe hands. It sure is. Have some apple? It's good. No, thank you. No apple. I just dropped in for a few minutes to see that everything is all right. I have to be going now. Will you excuse me? Of course. Oh, good day. Goodbye, Mr. Barrow. Say, that Mr. Barrow sure is a fine man, he? Uh, you talk too much. Well, what have I said now? You had no right to tell Barra where Texas hiding gospel. Oh, we can trust Mr. Barra. You can trust nobody. I'm going to find Tex and tell him. He makes me sick all over. He's right. Yes? Huh? Listen, Barra. Tex Lawrence is in town. We just met I him. I know that. Never mind him. I know where gospel's hiding out. You've got to go and get him right away. I've got something here I want to show you, Sheriff. Oh, then you wasn't lying. You are a ranger. Yes, sir. I just took it off of uh, Trigger Gargan and his gang. They're the ones that held me up and stole the pardon. Trigger Gargan, eh? Yes, sir. I might have known it. Come in. Tex Burrow knows all about the hideout. Well, how did you find that out? Ananias told him. I've got gospel hit out at Badger's Crevice. I think we'd better go find him first, then start in after Trigger in his game. Pee-wee, you go and get Ananias. 
Oh, you're right. Come on. Looks like they got him. Is he dead? No, but he's not far from it. We better get him down to the house. Not bad, huh? I don't know what your play is, young fellow, but whatever it is, I'm backing it. John Moody is dead, as far as the law is concerned. Oh, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. <laughs> Riding the range, singing a song. That's what I long to do. Riding the range, covered with dust. I'm coming home to you. And those rolling plains Where the cattle are grazing And the sun is a-blazing Blazing down with its beam Rolling plains a pony beside me and a lone star to guide me down the trail of my dream western moon riding high in the sky get along get along tell my love very soon I'll be by her side To ride and ride those rolling plains Where I'll meet friendly faces Roam the wide open spaces On those rolling plains Rolling Very fine, very fine. Hello, Dan. We didn't see you come up. <laughs> Kane Moody, what are you doing here? I want my share of the ranch. Now that Gospel's dead and there's no will, well, I'm entitled to half of this property by law, and I want it right now. This sounds like you, Kane. And just what part of the property do you think you're legally entitled to? Well, I want my half with the river and the homestead. The river and... Well, that leaves me with nothing but a lot of worthless wasteland and a ghost town. I won't even hear of such a thing. All right, then. Wait a minute. I'm afraid he's within his rights, Ruth. To resist his demands now will mean more trouble with him and his sheep herders. And we've had enough of that. Why don't you let him move in here and you come over to my place and stay until things can be straightened out properly? Well, now, that's just exactly what I'm advising her not to do. If she surrenders the ranch to Kane now, she'll never get her share. If you insist on moving on to the property, you can live in Powder Flat, but I'm staying here. The sheriff will see about that.
tomorrow at noon. Yeah. Ain't much time. Say, you two boys go down to Powder Flats and tell that Ruth has changed her mind and wants to see him tonight. All right. What? You mean you want us to go down there amongst all them? Yep. That don't sound like a very good idea to me. I know. That's why I'm sending you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How does it look? That's fine. Do you think he'll come tonight? Sure. Kane will come running when he hears you sent for him. <laughs> yeah, that must be him now. Come in. Hello, Ruth. You sent for me? Yes. Sit down, won't you? Sit down, Lope. Sure. Uh, you'll have to pardon the candle. We're all out of coal oil. I suppose you know why I've sent for you. No. I've been thinking things over, Kane, and I want to put an end to all this trouble and bloodshed. So I've decided to reconsider your proposition. <laughs> well, now, I'm glad to see you feel that way about it, Ruth. You boys must be tired and thirsty. Excuse me a minute. <laughs> well, Lope, what do you think of that? I told you I knew how to handle it. It's all right. Howdy, boys. Say, what kind of a frame is this? I wouldn't do that if I was you. Somebody might get hurt. Guess I'll just take charge of these powder burners. Lay them on the table, uh, just in case. Sit down, boys, it's free. Say, what's this all about, Lawrence? What do you want with me? Nothing. Just uh, wanted to have a little talk with you. <laughs> There's nothing you could say I would be interested in. Sit down, Kane. You weren't here when we buried Gospel. I thought maybe that you might be interested. I'm not interested. You should be, Kane. His last words were about you. About me? What did he say? He said to tell his worthless half-brother that you came, that he had never rest easy in his grave until his murderer had been brought to justice. Well, what does he, what does he want me to do about it? I don't know. But it'd be interesting to know who did kill him, wouldn't it, Kane? What? What do you mean? You know, the place seems kind of empty without old gospel, don't it? Yes, sir. No, it hardly seems right that he'll never be wearing these boots again. In his hat. You know, Gospel took a particular pride in this old Stutson. He sure cut a figure when he wore it. Too bad. Every object in this room knew him. He knew them. I can see him smoking that old pipe right now. I guess this old Bible here, though, was, was his favorite. He was particularly fond of a chapter in Samuel. You know the one, Cain, where Saul went to the witch of Ender. And the ghost of the prophet Samuel appeared before them as an old man wearing a long white mantle. And he pointed a long bony finger at Saul and said, And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Yeah. I'll never forget the night Gospel died. He was lying right there on that couch. 
and we was all standing around him. And I was singing his favorite hymn, Rock of Ages, and oh, I told you, didn't I? That that's the couch where gospel passed away. Yes, sir. Well, don't let it scare you, boys. He's not here now. Or is he? That singing. That voice. Let me Do you hear it? Hear what? I don't hear anything. Listen, listen. Don't you hear it? It's gospel. It's gospel singing Rock of Ages. I don't hear anything. You're just letting your imagination run away with you, Kane. Oh, no. No, I ain't. It's gospel. He's, he's coming back from the dead. It's gospel. I know his voice. Oh, he's coming. Judgment is at hand. Repent, for tomorrow ye will be no more of this world. No, no, Gospel! I didn't do it, it wasn't me. I didn't kill you, it was Trigger. Trigger killed you, yeah. Not me. Cain Moody, you are a murderer. You killed Hank Tomlin. Yes, I killed Tomlin. I killed him, but I didn't mean it. It was Trigger and Dan Burroughs that made me do it. Be quiet, Kane. You talk too much. <laughs> Dan Barrow? What did he have to do with this? Barrow? Why, it's all Barrow's fault. He's the cause of all this. He's the head of the sheepmen around here. He's not a cattleman. He hates cattlemen. Oh, it ain't my fault. Honest gospel, it ain't my fault. Oh, I got the other his thumb. And he made me do all these things. He forced me to sell my share of the ranch to him. And he forced me to kill Hank Tomlin. Right now, Barrow's got all the sheep men lined up in the county, up in Bottle Flats. And they're ready to gang up on the cattlemen in the morning. Honest, I ain't lying. I'm telling you the truth. Honest, honest, I am. Are you sure of this? It's the truth, it's the truth. I, I swear it. That's all I wanted to know. How was the text? All right? Mr. Moody, you were fine. You had me believing it for a minute. Oh. <laughs> you can stop playing now, Ruth. Uh, how did it work out, Tex? Great. Kane confessed to everything. Baron and sheep herders are starting trouble. So we're going to round up all the cattlemen and form a posse. I guess we'd better tie them up. Lawrence has Kane a prisoner at Gospels. I broke away before they could stop me. Kane squealed and, and, and Lawrence is lining up a posse to wipe us out. I know that. This time we're ready for them. I've got wagons up in the flat loaded with every sheep herd in this district. This time we'll clean them out for good. Get your horses, boys.
Get where you are, Lawrence. If you come any closer, I'll kill you. Put down that gun, Barrow. Oh, 